Hey guys, this is the market update. We have to talk about the Luna UST situation, how that's affecting Bitcoin and Ethereum. Obviously the huge sell-off in markets in general, but how that has sparked one of the biggest blow-ups really, uh, potentially in crypto history, which is Luna UST. And then obviously, you know, having contagion around the market. So I want to really go over what UST is, how that happened with this chart right here. Um, and then to talk about some of the ramifications of this, um, you know, how Luna will come out the other side of this, if they will come out the other side, what they have to do. And you're seeing just more selling in Luna right now, down 70%. And that makes sense because Luna, Terra Luna, right? This token right here is actually used um, to essentially fund UST as well. So this should be selling off because basically what they're doing now is trying to gather as much value as possible to back UST. UST is supposed to be a dollar and it's not trading at that now. It traded down to about 60 cents on the dollar, right? So a huge amount gone on. I'll try and, try and explain the whole thing right here. I'm going to look and read from this article as well. So I want to shout out for this Twitter account. Go and follow him. I'll link it in the description as well. Really a tick by tick blow of what was happening on chain at the time as well, actually before kind of the market started realizing what was happening. So um, yeah, I'll link this account in the description, you know, but, but essentially what happened is you know, people started selling off UST, right? There was a big kind of um, attack from obviously some some big players in the industry that sparked off, you know, the the big fear of a of a um, uncollateralized stablecoin, which is a run on the bank, right? You start getting uh, the dollar peg falling a little bit. Everyone starts to you know get a little bit scared, and they withdraw their own capital from that, right? They sell UST for something else, either USDT or USDC, something like that, right? So you're getting massive selling of UST. And so more and more selling, more and more selling, the peg fails. And obviously that is contagion. And what you're seeing here, this is Anchor Protocol, where so many people had UST earning that 20%. That is just unseen, right? Absolutely unheard of. Um, just a, a crazy. Now, this obviously means people are taking their money out, people are selling, people are getting out of the platform. Um, so this was obviously a huge contagion. So here's how UST works. Firstly, if you um, don't know, um, you know, we want to go through this first before we look at what, what happened in the curve pools, what happened with the DPEG, what happened also with selling of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So if you know how Luna works, they made a big stink about buying Bitcoin to back the peg of UST. That has just completely failed. That was naive to say the least. Um, Do Kwon signaled to the market that he was essentially going long Bitcoin with other people's money and he was going long at 40, 42, whatever it was. The market with much bigger bags could just sell him all the Bitcoin that they had, wait till he was full, dump the price and obviously force him to sell at a loss, which is what happened. Here's how uh, Luna and UST works. UST is a decentralized stablecoin. That means it is not backed by dollars in a bank account. Usually with something like USDT or USDC, um, USDT had some questions around it, but anyway, with USDC, they have a dollar for every dollar stablecoin that they have. USDC has a circulation of $50 billion right now. You can see that. So that means that is how much money they have in a bank account in the States sitting there in cash or near cash, they're called near cash instruments. They are very, very short dated debt. We're talking like three month here, one month, three month debt. So, you know, basically cash, they're called cash instruments because they're extremely liquid uh, and, and have extremely short duration. That doesn't happen with Luna and UST. UST is backed by Luna, right? So the value of Luna backs UST. There's a big mechanism that tries to keep um, this peg hap like in, in place, which I'll go over very simply now. I have other videos that really go through it in depth, but essentially what you do, right? You take your dollar and you buy UST and they give you $1 of UST. Where does your dollar go? It doesn't go into a bank account, of course, because this is decentralized. There is no bank account. So it has to go to a kind of crypto bank account. Well, that's what they do. They essentially take your dollar and what they do is they go and buy $1 of Luna off the market, right? So that obviously pumps the price of Luna. Every dollar that flows into UST is essentially a dollar flowing into Luna. Um, and that pumps the price, of course. Now, the whole way that this mechanism works is that 
with the other way, if you want a, if you want your dollar back, the Luna right here is sold uh, to the market, who then that goes back to UST and you can then you know send that out to your your dollar. The problem here and problem with every other state you know decentralized stablecoin is that this is a risk asset and so it can be moved around um, and it can change with daily supply and demand and characteristics. One of the the you know possible downsides of a decentralized stablecoin is that the uh, value of the stablecoin or the value of the uh, you know reserve and base asset doesn't back the entire value of the dollar and that's what's happened here. You can see Terra Luna is worth ten and a half billion dollars as um, you know that market cap. Terra UST is worth sixteen billion dollars. So here's here's a problem. You have people holding dollars, supposed dollars with UST worth 16 billion, and there's only $10 billion to fund that. That is an issue. That's like that's like having um, less dollars in the bank than you, you are owed, right? So it's an, it's an impossible situation. Now, this has happened as a result of the huge selling of UST. This is the open market position of Luna, and there is a circulation of this. Why this is here is because um, essentially, the Luna Foundation, Doquan, obviously has a bunch of tokens, right? Um, the Luna Foundation Guard, as they name themselves, um, have a ton of Luna as well. Now, that was obviously pumped in price by people putting dollars in. And so you have this situation where there's a lot of open market Luna, but there's also Luna that's controlled by a small party of people that essentially use that as well to try and, you know, invest uh, in assets that also back the, the peg of this one, $1 UST. And what they did was go and buy BTC or at least an amount of. Now, their plan was never to just buy uh, a one for one amount of Bitcoin with, with UST. But what they did essentially is say, hey, we want to buy like, you know, a few billion dollars of uh, Bitcoin to back the peg, to back liquidity around this one dollar. So if there is an attack and if there are a lot of people that suddenly want to sell out and there's a liquidity event, we have a few billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, very, very liquid asset in order to sell straight away um, to, you know, shore up the peg and make sure that even if there's a liquidity event, we have enough liquidity there to keep the peg at one dollar, and so uh, you know there won't be any contagion, there won't be any panic from other people trying to all sell out at once. Obviously, that didn't work. So I will now come to an article from this Twitter account, which I will link below. It's his work, not mine. So um, great account of you know what was happening at the time, and the on-chain was just obviously telling a, a really big picture, which is summarized here. I'll link this in the description as well. So obviously you have um, big liquidity pools around crypto that have a lot of different stable coins in, and that was part of the success of UST was attracting uh, a lot of liquidity, and they went out and, and got this liquidity by, via various methods, um, you know, both social and, and getting a lot of attention and hype uh, and also, you know, just having a lot of liquidity there because really this was one of the best ways to attract money to one protocol itself. You know, one of the most difficult things in crypto is to try and attract money into your, your protocol. Well, this was like the dream of all because it was just direct dollars. It was like someone's going to give you one dollar right into your token, right? And you just have all of this cash sloshing around. So people were attracted to that. But obviously that peg and, and the liquidity started, you know, breaking down. So what you can see here is the curve pools where a lot of the liquidity and trade between UST and other stable coins happens, namely US dollar tether, US dollar coin, um, and DAI as well, I think, and FRAX as well. So they've added some in. And you can see uh, down in the bottom right, um, the proportion of UST in blue compared to the others um, is obviously going through some big events right here. And it, that's what shouldn't happen, right? So you can see firstly, basically what was happening is someone was just absolutely carting UST at this liquidity pool, right? Selling it into the pool and getting out US dollar tether and US dollar coin. And that was creating an imbalance. And obviously that, that's not good. That, that means something is wrong when there's this imbalance like this. So what um, LFG or whoever is kind of backing this project did was send 50,000 Ethereum um, to a uh, exchange 
to basically sell that for US dollar tether and some, you know, some, some other dollars to reduce the imbalance in the pool. So you can see here 50,000 or so ETH was sold and another 20,000 was sent to Binance. That is a ton of money, right? One ETH is $3,000 or, or so. This was keeping the UST peg, but it was leading to hundreds of millions in on-chain ETH sales. And who knows how much on Binance? And obviously that's a centralized exchange, so you can't really see that. So what they're saying is, whoever this was has Ethereum and they're dumping Ethereum at the market, hence why you see both Ethereum coming down and Bitcoin, because it was happening around that too. Um, you know, that is obviously creating liquidity back into US dollar tether that they were using to essentially buy UST to keep the peg a uh, one for one. Now, what you can see here is exactly how it happened is that the uh, UST in blue versus the other um, stable coins in the pool in orange, you can see that it was just you know, de-pegging and, and there was massive selling of, of UST. Now, what you can see here as it comes back down right here, is that they were um, basically carting Ethereum at the market, selling it for those stable coins, and then rebalancing, essentially buying UST on their book, trying to keep the peg. And you can see it actually did work. It came down um, back to more or less parity. So that's obviously good for, for what they wanted to do was keep UST. But this is, you know, this is hundreds of millions of dollars worth of, of liquidity that they're trying to pour into this to save you know, the, the peg of UST. Obviously it doesn't work as you can see. But then it happens again. You get another event, more selling of UST. This is when the address Hero2 fixed the problem with a blunt $250 million worth more liquidity. Where's that liquidity coming from? Probably Ethereum sales, maybe some Luna sales, right? Luna, big Luna sales coming in. Uh, they're selling Luna to get the other um, stable coins in order to sell them to buy more UST to try and keep... Uh, parity again and it actually worked again pretty pretty blunt right bang straight down to parity again so you've got these sellers of ust trying to force it into huge liquidations um and then twice lfg or whoever it is have bluntly gone and sold ethereum to you know those other stable coins to try and you know get it back to parity the scale started to become worrying hundreds of millions spent on chain now holding ust as essentially toxic debt think about this the people that were selling ethereum at market whatever price dumping the price of that and you know therefore the whole ethereum ecosystem comes down they are selling that for us dollar tether and then taking us dollar tether and buying ust UST is now toxic debt because there is a run happening on the bank and people are selling it. And so you know, the chances you're buying UST here at, you know, 98 cents on the dollar, 97 cents on the dollar. Uh, how are you going to get your dollar back where well, it's going to keep going lower? So that's why it's called, you know, toxic debt, right? Because there are no um, there are no buyers for it. This is when the final attack began. At this point, just on chain, there were $580 million of unsellable UST in Hero2's address. So they're just buying UST over and over and over again. And again, the third attack happened. Now this was probably more, not just the attacker or whoever that was, but also the market itself. You know, lots of people that own UST saying, whoa, this is scary and I'm just, I, I'm out, right? And so you get a lot of people trying to sell all at once. You get this run. This is a run on a bank. That's exactly what it is. So UST just completely depegging overall when you saw, you know, this thing's supposed to be a dollar and it's just this huge amount. Now, for the most part, UST has recovered some of this, um, but the amount of money that it has taken to try and prevent it has obviously completely overwhelmed the kind of lunar ecosystem. Actually, at a certain point during this de-pegging event, it looks like Luna basically gave up trying to, you know, keep the UST peg anywhere near, you know, uh, parity at a dollar. Um, and that's quite clever, actually, because what, what essentially you're doing is to UST sellers, especially whoever or, you know, whomever, maybe a group of, of attackers on, on this, you're lowering the price that they're selling UST at. And obviously they're making less money. They're getting into kind of a, a worse position every time. And so what you can do is let them sell right down to maybe 80 cents, 70 cents, something like that. And then what you can actually do, um, if they're shorting UST, you, you then ramp that in their face. So you've heard of short coverings where people go short 
um, and then they're actually in a losing position and they need to buy back their short and that's where you get these short coverings and big you know rises that's potentially what they were doing here as traders saying you know what if you want to short ust you can do it but we're not going to let you short it at 98 cents we'll let you short it at 70 cents and then we'll use our liquidity there to try and get you to short cover and, and kind of raise the price back up that's just what kind of trading trading can happen and um you know that's probably what these traders did so that's the technicals of how the kind of trading happened and how the DPEG happened and how it was just completely unsustainable for uh, Luna to actually just keep chucking billions of dollars at this because it was, obviously, it was obvious that the kind of market itself had more liquidity to sell than they could absorb. But where do we go from here? Because, you know, a stable coin is supposed to really just be trust. That's really all it is. One dollar for one dollar at all times. And how can you sell a stable coin on anything but, you know, pure trust? So that is obviously a question that we just don't know right now. It's still very early. You can see that the amount of people pulling out of Anchor is obviously extreme right here. Uh, people just want their money out, which is obviously fair enough. Now, with other depegging de events that have happened in the industry, what usually happens is that the stablecoin does actually recover to a certain point um, because obviously the people that have sold it, especially the attackers that sell short, do have to cover their short back and then they will have to buy that back. So, you know, these depegging events often become extremely um violent but then do recover to a certain extent but obviously it's about the future of you know can ust as a as a brand as a stable coin actually carry on at this point and obviously um we don't know now because luna were backing the peg with uh, ethereum and obviously a bunch of bitcoin as well that's all been sold out so luna basically bought bitcoin up here at 45 probably has sold a bunch at 31 it's just an absolute uh, carnage uh, trade completely in a few weeks right from 45 they bought and now they're selling to back the peg at 30. I don't know how much they have left. I don't know how much they've sold, but they probably would have sold um, a good chunk. So just a terrible trade right here. Funnily enough, what we're seeing is uh, Bitcoin bounce today along with the stock market around this 30 level. This is just unreal support right here. If we break the 30 level, um, you can see the support really just is non-existent down to about 25 where the last kind of, um, uh, area of value really traded here at you know 20 22 23 24 you can see actually in a previous video this is hopefully what's going to happen but obviously we don't know that for now um, this is Bybit by the way if you want to get a deposit bonus on Bybit I'll leave that in the description you can get up to four thousand dollars in your futures trading account if you make a deposit so I'll leave that link if you want a uh, trading deposit bonus and then we can see UST against US dollar actually recovering uh, a lot now back to about 90 so you know anyone selling out now you're only making a 10 percent loss on that dollar rather than those guys down here which were making a 40 percent loss so these things do recover Luna are, are really using their capital now to try and bring it back to the peg rather than defending it initially if you want to get up to four thousand dollars in your futures trading account I'll leave the link to buy bit below only for experienced traders though because that is a futures trading account bonus um, but they'll give you up to four thousand dollars so I'll leave that link in the description I'm James with Money ZG cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one